Hello again, here today in the Tier 8 Japanese Premium Aircraft Carrier, Kaga. We are in 6 to 8 matchmaking, so we are top tier on the map Haven, and it's a standard battle, unfortunately. We're against an Implacable, and we're against a Richelieu Key, King George, Nisnow, New Mexico, and Oigan, in terms of ships I need to care about at all. We are on patch 0.8.7, so the AA Sector rework has come in, along with the squadron size changes and the AA mechanics. So now we have, again, as pre-0.8.0, we have overlapping AA Sectors, that is short and medium overlap and medium and long range overlap. So there's no AA dead zones per se, as there was previously in the rework carrier system. This, however, has meant that planes have been strengthened in general. You'll note that my planes have a bit more health than they used to, if I'm not mistaken, in terms of the 8-plane Kaga Squadron. Planes have received compensatory health buffs, and the defensive fire consumable has been changed to plus 50% continuous damage amplification and plus 300% flak damage amplification. So further emphasis on flak damage movement away from the continual damage and also the way sectoring works has been changed somewhat. So starting off, there's a Minsk and an Igla in this game, but I'm just taking a look around, look for some vulnerable targets. Prince Eugen has some pretty potent AA if he sectors properly. There's the Minsk on the way. He does however have 5.2 kilometer range on his 105 millimeter guns. I give him a nice little tap. The Minsk smoking up. My squadron's eating quite a bit of continual AA fire there as I fly into the concave of more or less five or six ships. So obviously, my fragile A6M0s are going to suffer. Nevertheless, as a Kaga, I have another 17 rocket planes, so that doesn't bother me at all. Now note that we did get a fire on that Eugen. The Eugen has access to a heal, so he's less ideal to strike than most tier 8 cruisers, but nevertheless, because we got the damage control, we are going to try and bleed him out. So based on the minimap, we are going to continue on our way. So compared to 0 0.8 and 0 0.8.5 and 0.8.6, AA has gone down a little bit in terms of its potency. Overall, the buffs to AA did not even out with the buffs to squadron health and such, and so as a result, in general, for the most part, you get stronger planes, and more consistent strikes. A nice 3 torpedo strike on the Oigan, gonna ditch this last torpedo bomber because as you can see, it has been locked, but no follow-up flood, which is unfortunate. We did get a flood on the New Mexico. I'm gonna launch my D4Ys, the dive bombers, see if we can follow up. I did incapacitate something on that Oigan, but as a cruiser, his damage control will be up by now. So it'll just be initial strike. So we've spotted both GDs, not too much to worry about. Leander wandering over there. Nice now is actually quite a tempting target, but we're gonna continue to harass the Prince Oijin, because he just launches fighter, so he now has a vulnerable window within which I can more effectively attack him. It's also this Minsk here, who is not exactly maneuvering, so given that he's here, I will try and make an attempt. I have the HE dive bombers anyway. Pretty good munition. Looks like I got a good lead on him, and two bomb strikes is pretty good. After the 0.8.4 HE dive bomber ellipse changes, the Kaga HE dive bombers are not particularly good versus destroyers. You tend to land one bomb if you're lucky. So getting two bomb strikes is pretty above average. Not a great strike on the Oigan here, as you can see. Does bracket him, but that's fine. We got a hit on an important target, one of the two DDs on the enemy team, so I am satisfied with that. Now we're gonna continue harassing the Oigan. Oh, it looks like there's an Italian super tester in my game, how pleasant. Looks like the Implacable is harassing a Cleveland, an interesting choice of target considering 
There's plenty of isolated targets here. Or these two tier 7 tier would probably still be easier to strike. I'll give him some fighter cover, I suppose. He did go end up going after the tier 7s. There's a fighter in my way. I was going to go after the Igla in spite of the fighters. Did the squadron fade? No, it's just the vision mechanics playing with me. Looks like there's a King George V, which is a flame, right on the edge of my detection. Note that my 6.07 detection range with the Kaga torpedo bomber means I have excellent concealment. We found the Minsk as well. So the fire either just expired or he put it out. Key, a bit too close for us to strike effectively, so we're gonna actually dive past him, unfortunately. Not the greatest thing to do, given the keys 100 millimeters are quite potent. And try and get a ranging shot, but don't expect those to connect. Looking at our reserves, 32, 36, means that we're gonna reach for the dive bombers. You wanna keep cycling, make sure none of these get full. The Kaga does have below average squadron regeneration and very deep reserves in exchange. As I said, that Nice now did get dispatched. I'm gonna take a look at that Igla. The fighter squadron will have faded by now, returned to its carrier, shall we say. So I was detected already over here, so I know he's just advanced forward somewhat. Whether he went straight or not is a different matter entirely. So it looks like he may have made a turn. There we go. Using our detection to f hunt our quarry. Our quarry, if you prefer. It's lighting him up for the Massachusetts. Looks like he was making a torpedo run. He doesn't appear to be moving very quickly, which means my first drop is going to be quite inaccurate. Quite tragic. You do need to give a fair amount of lead time these days. He's smoking up. No, note my angle is off. I know approximately where he is though in terms of the reticle. I'm just going to drop off a fighter to get one blind hit and that's enough for the Helena to help us secure it. Four planes left. I'll take a look around, but it's probably best to just recall. Now, with that in mind, that it probably would have been better to recall, I am going to still make a strike on this Richelieu, probably with just two bombers by the time I get to him. Alright, so note how I essentially wasted my time there. Did not get that strike off, so that was a waste of my time. Oh, Maki strikes the implacable, which... Did not move. I similarly have not moved, but my team, as you can see, has quite the initiative in terms of map control, so I haven't had to move. Nice conservative game so far, haven't done particularly much in terms of damage. That's quite alright. Richelieu, as you can see on the minimap, separating himself out from the pack. That is why I wanted to strike him initially in the first place. I simply did not have enough HP on the die bombers left to do so. Now using my excellent concealment on my Tenzins, this is with a full concealment build on the Kaga. This is my Hakuryu captain. I'm gonna sneak up on the Rochelle, get nice and close and get a nice dedicated strike. Looks like he's coming forward but not particularly at speed. Gonna pop my heel to make sure I can sustain this turn. I want to come around for a full on strike. I am over the Leander from the looks of it. Nice clean four torpedo strike. He's picking up speed now, only managed to get three torpedo bombers off, unfortunately, but that's fine. Gonna relaunch with my dive bombers. Note my rocket planes are almost back up. It's been nine minutes, and I still haven't fully regenerated the initial eight. This is because of the Kaga's slightly subpar regeneration rate. You're really leaning on your big initial reserves. And this is what makes the Kaga powerful when she's top tier. When she's bottom tier, however, and you sustain quite a few more losses, this tends to be a bit of a problem. Now Key, which is the isolated target which I'm going after now, due to his isolation, 
It has a rather powerful modernized AA suite. Most of that AA suite, however, is focused in his long range aura. A bit late on my boost pop, probably should have popped it a bit earlier. The Akazuki guns, also known as the IGN's 100mm or 4.1 inch gun, is a powerful long range mount, but once you get up close to the key, she relies on her Bofors Chi, a license built 40mm, which is not quite as good as the American 40mm Bofors. Got a nice 4 bomb strike there. You saw though that even with my quote unquote slingshot, which was a bit too far out, I probably should have used my engine cooling consumable in order to get a better boost. I did lose three planes on the way in. The four planes that made the strike got out. The, the other four who were accompanying them, however, were not as fortunate. Now I did get a fire, which he damage controlled. You can see my damage is no longer ticking up. So I'm gonna get as close as I can before I initiate my attack run at range in order to get a nice, close, tight concave on my torpedo bombers. Now hold steady, Japanese torpedo bombers, while they ready the attack quite quickly, are quite vulnerable to sudden maneuvers, throwing off their aim. So he's responding, I got the flood I'm here for though, so no nothing else really matters. He's turning, we'll match it to turn, and he's going to have to flatten out. And we're going to recall because that one red health plane is not going to make it. Continue to move forward. My second torpedo strike connects. Nice perfect strike. And we've gone from a modest 40k up to 100,000 in a very short span of time. However, that one flood is not going to put him down. Floods in the rework system don't tick for that much. So we're going to put him down the manual way. Looks like he did get his damage control off yet again. Looking just to make one clean strike, so again I'm going to slingshot in. Note that I'm slingshotting at 7.5 because I need to make a turn. And a turn means that even though a normal slingshot covers about 8 to 8.5 kilometers, I need to do it a bit closer because some of my horizontal trajectory, as you might call it, is used to execute this turn. Not a perfect drop, but we got a fire, which is what we're looking for here. Oh, we damage controlled again. Okay, honestly, the damage, the quote unquote damage control on the flood might not have been a damage control, he might have just ticked out. That's very tragic, someone else is gonna have to clean him up for us. I'm launching the A6Ms, not because they're the optimal munition here, someone else is gonna finish that key for us, I believe. I hope. But because um, it's the fastest plane, popping my engine cooling consumable, just trying to eke in a little more damage. This Pensacola is nice and thinly armored, but even if he was a tier 8 cruiser, the most plating tier 8 cruisers have is 27mm found on the Baltimore and Prince Eugen, and the Kaga rockets fortunately have 28mm of penetration, unlike the A6M2s found on the Ryuho, which have 26, which means I pen cruisers all over, outside of 30mm middle strips. Oh, this is not the Pensacola, this is uh, the Prince Eugen that I was harassing earlier. That is uh, a bit embarrassing. Okay, someone slaps him out of the water. Pretty high health. He's pretty far from any local frets, so I'm gonna choose the second fastest plane in my arsenal, the D4Y. 16,000 health, no nearby friendlies, which means I can take my time with this last target. Not going to slingshot, it's a York, a tier 7 cruiser against my tier 7 planes. He might shoot down two or three, maybe a few more if I stumble into flak, but there's no way he's gonna shoot down this squadron of 12. It's just not possible. He doesn't have that much AA. So I was somewhat reticent to touch the Kaga during 0.8.5 and 0.8.6 
because of the intense AA fire that is not said in play here. I did play her, but she was quite a bit notably more fragile during those two patches due to the changes in AA. They affected her pretty heavily because of her... Okay, you can see a defensive fire here. It's doing about zero damage, give or take. Oh, can't even clean it up. But yeah, during the previous two patches, the Kaga was slightly worse off due to the changes in the way AA interacts with plane health. Now that interaction remains the same, however, plane health has gone up, and AA continuous DPS has gone down, which means as long as you're dodging your flax, you'll have a good time. So, it's become a bit easier again. Now looking at our overall performance, just shy of 117,000 damage. 18, oh, this is done over 18 torpedo strikes, 10 bomb strikes, an aircraft shot down, 3 incapacitations, 4 fires, 2 floods, 10 swatting ribbons, and 11 rocket hits. Not a huge fan of the Kaga rockets, so I don't reach for them as much, especially compared to the Shokaku or the Lexington. Uh, if I compare them to the Saipan Rocket Squadron, which I also am not a fan of, I probably still prefer the Saipan because of superior armor-piercing capabilities. So we are at a 1500 base experience. This is pretty typical for a top-tier game where you don't do too much. You'll note that I essentially didn't do too much after the early part of the game other than bully battleships. That's how I padded my damage stat, but damage does not always get reflected in base experience. Now going over the damage distribution, 25,000 in bombs, 70,000 in torpedoes, and a mere 7,000 in rockets. 12,000 from floods, which is unusual, you don't usually get too much flood damage. So this is probably above average for a tier 8 game. Against 10s, this is more typical because 10s have larger hit point pools and not that much from fires this time. But yeah, a decent game, pretty straightforward. Top tier, so I'm a huge bully. And it's been a while since I visited Akaga, and yeah, on patch 0.8.7, she's still a huge monster when top tier, and decent when bottom tier. Very manageable. I hope this commentary was helpful to you, and hope you keep up. Hope to get... I... sorry for repeating myself. I will be putting out more content soon, and I hope to be back. Cheers.